بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد بلسان جامعه في الحضره واسئته وصلاه تموت بها جسم من جسمه وقلب من قلبه وروح من روحه وسر من سره وعلم من علمه وعمل من عمله وخلوق من خلوقه ووجهاته من وجهاته ونيته من نيته وقصدي من قصده تعوذ بركاته علينا وعلى شيوخنا وعلى قلوبنا وهذا المجلس مبارك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <تصفيق> can have an effect on a whole generation your nia can have an effect on a whole generation of your descendants so make your intentions beautiful and make them sound and be sincere in your intentions and before you do anything before you do any act before you eat before you sleep before you go out before any act that you do multiply your intentions multiply your intentions for that act and then what will happen is that every intention that you have made for that act will attract its own merit its own nur its own barakah, its own sir, and its own connection. So you make that connection. So for example, you come to this gathering. What's the intention that you're going to have to come to a gathering like this? The intention is that when you're walking or driving to this place, you bring it into your heart, into your mind, that Allah says, فَأَذْكُرُونِي Remember me. That remember me. So you're coming here, you're driving, you say, Allah, you said, remember me, and you remember us. So you, you have that intention. Allah says in the Quran, in Allah wa malaikatu yusallun ala nabi, ya ayyuhalladina amunu, sallu alihi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa alayka alayhi. Allah says in the Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his angels send salutations upon the Prophet, Allahumma salli wa alayka alayhi. And all you who believe, sallu, like, Pray upon the Prophet, Allahumma shalli barak alayhi. So that's your intention. When you're driving here, your intention is that, Allah, you have commanded us to pray upon the Prophet, Allahumma shalli alayhi. I'm going to a gathering that where they'll be praying upon the Prophet, Allahumma shalli alayhi. Give me the ajr of that. We're told to bond with the community. We're told to stick together as a ummah. So your intention is to come to this gathering, inshallah ta'ala, to, to stay together. Your intention will also be that you're here so you can have some gentle reminders, so you can have a connection with your deen. And every and every niya you have made will attract its own barakah. Shaykh Uthman and Fodio, loving Allah, he's the, uh, the one who established the Sokoto Empire in Nigeria. He was a Maliki scholar, he was an Ali Bayt. And uh, every time he would leave home, he would stop at the door. Before he will step out, he will check his intentions. He'll check all his intentions before leaving. And we discussed today about being mindful. That you are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every act and every action you do. You think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every act. When you go to a college, when you go to school, or if you're driving someone... If you're a taxi driver or you drive buses or you teach people on the buses or whatever the case be, what is your intention when you leave out? Your intention is, Ya Allah, I'm going out to have a halal income. So I can eat halal. So I can feed my family halal. So I can have the energy to worship you. Every intention you have made will be accepted, inshallah ta'ala. You are a mother and you have children, young children, and you don't have time to study the Arabic you haven't got time to memorize the whole Quran. You haven't got time to study all the classical texts. So you make the intention, Allah, I'm bringing up believers. 
I'm bringing up a believer. So every time you teach your child to say Bismillah Rahman Rahim, you get the reward for it. You teach your, your child how to do wuzu, you get reward for it. Any good act that you teach your child will go into your account. That's what it is. Right? You know, only nine people from Hadramot, nine people from Yemen, from the family of the Prophet Allah, nine people, they went to Indonesia on the intentions. One of the intentions was calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nine went to Indonesia and the whole land became Muslim. The whole land became Muslim. Five of them went to Malaysia. Five of them went to Malaysia. They were not giving fancy talks. The intention was calling people to khair. Because calling people to khair is khair in itself. And they went there with beautiful adab, beautiful ikhlaq. People saw them and they said, we want to be like this. And the whole land became Muslim. Our own Sheikh, our beloved Sheikh who passed away, Rodin Allah, Habib Ahmed Mushul Haddad, Rodin Allah, Habib Ahmed Mushul Haddad. He's buried next to Lady Khadija, alayhi salam, next to Lady Khadija, next to his best friend, Sayyidina Habib Abdul Qadr al Saqaf. When they went to do dawah in East Africa, three over 300,000 became Muslim. 300,000 because of good ikhlaq. Now, talking about niyyah and what happens if it intentionally affects your children, most of you know the story, but it's good for the reminder. Over a thousand years before the Prophet ﷺ was born, one thousand years before Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ was born, there was a king in Yemen, Humaira his name was, Wara, Warda his name was, but they call him Tubba, Tubba. And this king had a huge army. He had all these servants and slaves and over a hundred thousand horsemen. He had people on the, uh, on the front line and he had soldiers, he had scholars, he had doctors. And what happened, wherever he traveled, wherever he traveled, people will come out to receive him. Wow. <laughs> this huge army, wow, they'll come out to praise him, you know. And what he will do, he will choose the best people from there, 10 of them, best. You, 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 the best shukh, the best teachers, the most pious of them, he will take them. 10, 10, 10, 10, wherever he went, 10, 10, 10, until he had 4,000 scholars around him, right? So wherever he went, people came to receive him. Ah, wow, wow. And then he arrived at Makkah, right? You have Makkah and you have Bakkah. Some say Makkah is the city and Bakkah is where the Kaaba is. And some say it's the other way around. That is Bakkah is the city and Makkah where the Kaaba is, right? So he arrives there. All his soldiers and all his advisors, but nobody comes out. No one has come out. And so he gets angry. So he turns around to his advisor, his wazir. He said, where are the people? He said, uh, he said, whom jahil? Because they're jahil. Whom Arab? They're Arabs. You know? And they have an Induhum bait. They have a house. You see the Kaaba. They call it the Kaaba. So they, they honor this place. So he got really angry. This, this king, like Tubba, got very angry. So he makes an intention. Right? He makes the intention inside that he's going to demolish the Kaaba. And he's going to kill all the men. And he's going to take all the women and the children. They say the moment he makes this intention, Allah causes him to have a headache, this severe headache. He starts to have a headache, right? And pus starts to come out from his ears and his nose. And it's a stench, a like horrible smell. So the people around him start going away from him because he was just so, like, it was such a horrible smell. And he was in pain. So he's asking all his doctors, give me a cure. Like, what's happening, you know? And they will come and they will check him out. But, you know, he was, it was like a horrible smell. And they said, uh, this is not from dunya. This is from the heavens. We don't have 
the skills for this, right? Now, from the 4,000 scholars, the sheikh of all of them, like the senior of them, he comes out and he speaks to the wazir, to the minister. He said, can you, can you uh, arrange in a meeting between me and the king alone? He said, yeah, okay. He said, you know, I just want to talk to him. And if he speaks to me, and, and, and uh, uh, I think I have an ilaj, I have a treatment for him. Tayyib. So they go to the king. He said, this is the situation. King says, bring him in. So uh, he comes in and he says to him, Helen, Nawaita had a bait amr. Did you make an intention, anything about this house? Like the Kaaba? He said, um, yeah, I did. I made an intention to, uh, to destroy it, kill his people. He says, ah. He goes, this is the problem. He said, you just change your intention. Just change your intention. Take it out of your heart. Right? So the king, he just, he goes, all right. They say the, sh the sheikh didn't, he didn't even leave the room, the, re the place, and the, sh and the king was healed. Now, he's so happy, the king, he gets the most expensive cloth, and he covers the Kaaba. So he becomes the first one ever in the history to cover the Kaaba. You have the Kiswa. He's the first one to cover it, right? The next day, he takes all his entourage. They, you know, they're going down, they're going down. They come to a bir, they come to a well. And they go, where are we? Like, where are we? So they said, Hada uh, Yatrib. This is Yatrib. Right? This is the name of Medina before, you know, Yatrib. So they arrive there. He said, okay. So they sit. Now the ulama that were there, they were, Hada Makan, this is the place. Hajar Sayyidina Muhammad, the Prophet will come here, Salabarika. This is the place where the Prophet will come. And we are not going to leave this place. And if the king says tomorrow that we have to leave, we're not going to leave. And even if he, if he kills us, we will stay here. We're not going to leave. And if we don't catch the Prophet, we intend that our children catch them. Right? The next day the king gives the alan, let's all go. And people say, we ain't going. The ulama say, we ain't going. So he asked the wazir, like, what's happening here? And they go, this is what's happening. Right? This, this is what's happening. They ain't going to go because this is, this is where the last prophet is going to come. From Mecca is the place where he'll be born and he's going to do hijrah from there. to. This man is listening and he falls in love with the prophet. He said, okay, I'll stay here for one year. Wait for the prophet to come. And if, if he comes, I'll take bayah with him. Right? And uh, what he does from the 400 uh, scholars, he builds them homes for them, 400 homes, right? And the free servants, he, ha he had girls that were slaves. He freed them and he got them married off. All of them got married, all the men. He goes, you will wait here, right? And then he has a letter written for the Prophet, Allahumma salli barakali, right? He has a letter written, right? Letter is, is written and is stamped with gold. And he, said, he says to the sheikh of all the shuk, he said, take this. And if you catch the Prophet, give it to him. And write in your will that you will, if you don't catch it, give it to your children. And give it to your children and they'll give it to their children until it reaches the Prophet. A thousand years go by. A thousand years go by. And the people of Medina, they have not seen the Prophet. But they believe in the Prophet, Salabarakali. Like all, all sitting here. We're all sitting here and we never met the Prophet, Allahumma Salli Alayhi. But we heard about the Prophet and we believe him, Allahumma Salli Alayhi. So they heard that Sayyidina Muhammad is coming, that he's left Makkah. Right? So they, the, the people there, they said, we need to give this letter to the Prophet. So Abdul Rahman, Sayyidina Abdul Rahman Auf, said, let's find someone who's good, who's taqi, who's pious. So they get a man called Abu Layla. Take Abu Layla to give this to the Prophet. 
Abu Layla doesn't know the Prophet. He's not met the Prophet, Allah Musalli alayhi. But he takes his ride, he puts it in his bag, and he travels, right? And he's, he's outside Medina, right? And Sayyidina Muhammad is staying with some tribe, right? When he arrives there, he doesn't know who the Prophet is, sallallahu alayhi wa But Sayyidina Muhammad is there. Sayyidina Muhammad sees him. He said, Anto uh, Abu Layla? You Abu Layla? So Abu Layla thinks to himself, in, in himself, this is a face of someone who does not do magic. How did he know? Like he's thinking, how do you know I'm Abu Layla? How do you, how do you know? And he said to him, do you have the letter of Tubba? He goes, he goes, nah. He goes, man anta? He goes, anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I am Muhammad Rasulullah. Sallallahu So then he comes, he opens his bag, and he gives the letter. Sayyidina Muhammad takes the letter, and he gives it to Sayyidina Ali. He gives it to Sayyidina Ali, iqra, read. So he reads Sayyidina Ali. And Sayyidina Ali says, this is the king to the Prophet, sallallahu And he says to him, uh, As-salamu alayka ya Sayyidina Muhammad. He says, inni amantu birik. I believe in you. Wa kitabik and your book. And I believe your sunnah. And he said, if I catch you, now I'll take bay'ah with you. But if I don't catch you, do interse like intercede for me on the day of judgment. He says, don't forget me. Like, don't forget me, right? They say, Sama'a hada rasul, the Prophet heard this. He said, marhaban, marhaban akhi salih. Marhaban, akhi salih. Welcome, righteous brother. Welcome, righteous brother. Welcome, righteous brother. Three times from the Prophet to him. Now, remember, he's traveling out to Medina. I'm going to finish now. He's traveling out to Medina. People are coming out. They've heard the Prophet is coming, but they've never seen him. So they come out in the morning, and they're coming out. And you could imagine, like, if you were there, if you were there, coming out every day, you'd be wearing your best clothes. And so I'm sure they were wearing the best clothes. And I'm sure they were making the best food, because just in case Sayyidina Muhammad come to their house, or the Barakale, right? They must be having these discussions in their homes. The Prophet is coming, Sayyidina Muhammad is coming, but they've not seen him, or the Barakale, right? So they come out in the morning to see the Prophet is coming. They've heard coming, they'll get hot and they'll go back. They come out again in the morning, they wait for the Prophet, Allah it becomes, it becomes hot, they go back. And one day they were going back, there was a Jew on the roof, on the roofs of the houses of Medina. He said, here he comes. Here he comes. What a sight. <laughs> what a sight. So, they, so he's riding, but it's him and Sayyidina Abu Bakr. It's him and Sayyidina Abu Bakr, right? Well, he's coming. But the people had not seen the Prophet. So who's the Prophet? Like you got Sayyidina Abu Bakr, you got Sayyidina Muhammad, any, who, who's who, right? So when they arrived there, when the Prophet and Sayyidina Abu Bakr arrived there, they come under a tree and they sit under a tree and the people all go around them. And looking at the Prophet and looking at Sayyidina uh, Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Abu Bakr realized. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr stood up and took his shawl and covered the head of the Prophet. And they realized that's the Prophet. And the reason they could not know the distinction between the Prophet and Sayyidina Muhammad, they say because the Prophet and Sayyidina Abu Bakr spent three days in the cave. Three days in the cave. Like three days. So the reflection, the nur of the Prophet was on the face of Abu Bakr. So they could not distinction who is the Prophet and who is Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Right? And that's for, I mean, if you meet one Sahabi, like if you are Sahabi, you met the Prophet once. For 10 seconds. You met the Prophet for 10 seconds. You believe in him and you went away. You can bring all the ulama, all the scholars from all the Prophet's generations, different generations, all the Prophets from Ibrahim alayhi salam, Sayyidina Suleiman alayhi salam, none of them will reach the rank of you. Because you spent only one or ten seconds with the Prophet. So how about who spent three days with the Prophet? Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Siddiq. Right? Now, when they come, 
He's on his camel. His last point. He's on the camel. You and me are all there. And hoping that the Prophet will come to their house. And the night, Ya Rasulullah. And the night, come to us, Ya Rasulullah. Come to us, Ya Rasulullah. And the camel is going here. And the Prophet said, the camel is under command. And he comes and he stops right at the house of Sayyidina Abu Ayyub and Sadi. And he stops there. Sayyidina Abu Ayyub, can you imagine that? He, he comes out running outside, right? And he stays in that house. Abu Ayyub Ansari is the descendant of that sheikh. He is the descendant of that sheikh who is the sheikh of all of the shuk there. He had a good intention. And look at his great, great, great grandchildren. Mashallah, Abu Ayyub Ansari was hosting the Prophet. Allahumma salli alayhi. So inshallah, Allah, Allah give us tawfiq to make us, you know, have this, this niyas. Inshallah, Allah. Alhamdulillah.